Well, hello, my name is Laura McCormick. We're here at <laughs> Zero. I don't know what you want me to say. We don't know where we, where we even are anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I'm it's, half asleep. It's anyway. Friday. We're, it's crazy. It's a circus. We're at a circus. Yeah, pretty it's much. Pretty much. It's a fun circus. <laughs> the um, main reason that you're here at CRS this year is yes. to talk about the material you had, the debut album, Box Full of Trouble. I like the title. Thank you. Uh, does it describe you? Does it describe the song? Well, that's kind of why I went with that title. My mom actually pulled it out of one of the songs that's on the album. Um, the I'm Gonna Break Your Heart is the song that the title came out of. But it just kind of does kind of... <laughs> it's me, yeah. It's it's me. Um, it's the songs. It was what I was hoping to be, kind of, you know, two country music, just something a little different. Um, maybe cause a little bit of a ruckus. Not not a bad ruckus. A good a good yeah. one. But um, you know, and it's literally a box. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just all in one. So what were the kind of things that you? Because you wrote all the material. I what did. Are, what are the the sort of things that you wanted to explore on that album is it an album that's just this is Laura or were there other themes a lot a lot of that every single song on there has is something about my life or one of my best friends life or something that I have you know taken as my what I envisioned what was going on in their life over, over about a three-year span mm -hmm. so um it's kind of just like a time period of my life so every every song on there comes from them so it, it's definitely a piece of a piece of me um for sure <laughs> yeah and the you also worked on the on the production of the record i did that was a How new did, did th that come about to, that, for you to get involved in that side yeah i was the guy that i co-wrote everything with had produced numerous albums before um so when we went in i hadn't actually been in a recording studio before this was my first time so they were just kind of teaching me how to do it and this was when we were doing more demos as opposed to actually yeah, working okay. on an album yeah. Yeah, yeah so um just it was kind of second nature to me so it was really exciting because i'd never gotten to do that and um so they let me just kind of <laughs> take the reins um at this time in my life i very much like to have my hand in everything that's going on mm -hmm. as far as my music and my album and making sure that everything's exactly what i envision it to be so um yeah they they let me do it and it was very very cool experience yeah, <laughs> for sure. second nature so do you mean then figuring out as you're producing a song figuring out how you want to layer it where you want to put yeah the all the different all instruments you, you just hear. yeah all the different instruments in the mixing and uh we'd finish a song and then come back and add another instrument the next time we came in and did a session and um it was just I, i'd never gotten to do that before and then it's just like a light switch turned on that had never been turned on in my brain and things were just going crazy and i i just think about it constantly all the time now and think about it bringing it to my next album what I'm already excited about doing and songs that we have recorded that I'm so excited to redo and just take them kind of to that next level so yeah. is there any particular direction you find yourself following as a producer as opposed to a songwriter so a kind of a, a, a sonic direction like is it more crunchy edgy do you what do you try to put into it that makes it different from everybody else? Well, I'm, I'm really kind of into that classic rock um, feel. I grew up listening to country some and a lot of classic rock. So I feel I'm not necessarily searching to bring that into the songs, but that tends to show up a little hint of that in that's them. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, that's just what I love, and that seems to come back, a little hint of it. You know, a lot of the songs you feel like maybe you felt that before in a song or you've heard a little bit about it or heard something kind of like it but it's not the same yeah. um so i try to bring that back i'm a huge fleetwood mac fan so i like those haunting those haunting melodies and i love minor chords and stuff like that so i just try to bring something a little a little different definitely with a rock edge for sure yeah. minor chords big yes in the right genre <laughs> What I found really interesting is that you worked as a ICU nurse for mm -hmm. quite a number of years. Yes, six years. And it strikes me as the kind of career that's a calling. Yeah. It's, it's a very intense, but also very yes. rewarding 
occurred. Yes. It, it feels like a calling. Yes. Was it a calling for a particular phase of your life and now you feel called to do something else? I, I, yeah, I kind of think it was. I think that it prepared me so much for what I'm facing now that... But it is part of me. Um, my dad does anesthesia, so I've grown up around the medical field. And I just love being able to be there during hard times with people and hearing people's stories. And you just learn so much from people when when they're not at their best or when they are at their best. It's just, it's. I just love hearing that and relating to people. So I've always sang my whole life. I actually always had this weird comforting feeling that I would eventually get to pursue this but when it was time to you know make an actual move towards college or a career um I wouldn't have been a very good music teacher <laughs> let's put it that way um so I chose nursing and it, I, that was just the obvious that that's what what I would do if I couldn't do this um and I loved it and I really you know want to get back into some volunteer work and possibly even working just a little bit volunteer wise um back in that field but I feel like that gave me a lot of insight into like handling stress and just um life experiences and learning other people so that I can bring that into my songwriting and connect with people on a different level and I write for therapy for myself um sure. all my songs are so I still love hearing how these songs have made someone else feel or how they've connected and you know when you write a song sometimes you write it about one thing but then you hear from somebody else what they got out of it and how they yeah, thought it was about and that I just think that's so cool like just how we're all you know it's just I don't know it's really yeah. neat and yeah, yeah it so helps I was thinking people. as you said that and I thought yeah if you can handle working in ICU successfully for that many years yeah then, you know if something goes wrong on the road you're just gonna yeah. be like I can deal with it well and I feel like it's made me not near as afraid to be vulnerable um and open and it's kind of an open wound right there for everybody to look at um because that that happened in nursing too I mean you just you just have to be completely yourself and open and there's a lot of great learning experiences and I've been exploring you know. the idea of vulnerability a lot this week it yeah. keeps coming up and I think it's really important to being an artist you, it, it intrinsically you have to be vulnerable yeah and being vulnerable <laughs> is an act of courage exactly because you're inviting it's terrifying criticism. yeah it's really hard is that something that always came naturally to you when did you realize that it involved vulnerability no it does it didn't and it still doesn't all the time because you know sometimes when you've been through a lot of things you naturally want to be strong because you feel like that's the front that you have to put off especially if you don't want to get hurt I mean who wants to get hurt so um, that didn't come naturally, but I, that's another thing that I feel like nursing helped, is seeing other people at their most vulnerable and the amazing things that they've accomplished or just accepting it and seeing how happy they became, just just accepting what is and, and letting people love them and be there and say what they had to say. I also think it helped me know, well, really see on the forefront that we have you know, one life, I'm going to be honest, <laughs> so I don't, I don't want to have any regrets, and uh, you just got to go, go big or go home, Yes. not worry about what everybody else has to say. And it, it's almost in the way that you were helping patients or, you know, people before through their struggles, now you can do that with music. Yeah, yeah, and they were helping me a ton too, so. Yeah. Yeah. I've been finishing up with this question, and I've gotten some really cool reactions. Which songs would you put on the soundtrack to your life? Oh, wow. Well. Um... <laughs> and it's hard because as a song that writer, it, you yeah, write yeah, and that of other people's songs that you that you feel oh like other people's you songs or okay part of you or a phase of your um, life. This is gonna sound super depressing, but I've really been into like uh, the song Wicked Games right now, which is not a country song at all, but love that um, party wise anything on the Cadillac Three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, that's hard because that there's so many. There's so, I, there's a different one for a different day because my emotions yeah. change <laughs> so so constantly. Um, I might have to get back to you on that one. I know. Don't have a <laughs> don't have a great answer to that one right now. No problem. Thank you so much. Sorry. Thank you so much.